What is up, everybody? My name is Dane Thompson. Welcome back to another episode of Burn Down. So, we're still on the Balamoon project. I guess I don't even have to tell you guys at this point, but um, today we are going to hopefully make some fuel lines, reinstall the fuel cell where I had Struggle Street and I installed the pumps and all that good stuff. Thank you again to War Performance, uh, Joey G for making the hat, and um, oh, my buddy Turbo Joe for wiring stuff up. Don't want to leave anybody out. So yeah, it took uh, a company and then four individuals to make a simple deal. But I will tell you this, if you guys see it and you like it, um, that is a problem solving item that I may be able to produce. Uh, I have a buddy with a Tormach CNC. Uh, and then also I got Joey, but Joey said he's busy. So if you guys are interested in those hats, um, I could probably make them in limited batches and then just sell them really cheap on the site if it was something that you guys wanted to do. If you wanted to get an eBay fuel cell and one of the hats and then you could buy a pump and you could essentially do it all yourself, uh, let me know in the comments if that's something you guys may be interested in and then I could just get some material and batch out those little hats and stuff and kind of put little packages together and you know, put them in plastic bags or whatever and just ship them to you guys and hopefully make your life a little simpler, a little easier and a little cheaper. And in my opinion, um, Obviously, I'm not going to get rich selling the little hats, but I would do it more so to help you guys and because I have friends that have cool equipment. Um, In-tank pumps, in my opinion, are the way to go. I've had external this whole time, and the in-tank with it, the pump stays cooler in the fuel, so it's going to last longer. Um, it also is quiet. And the Walbro pumps, this is the one big thing, the reason I switched to a Walbro from the 4303, is there's... There, OEM quality so they're meant to go the distance I mean if you drive a later model car every single late model car on the road has an electronic fuel pump um, I know previously like 90s and stuff early era even some of the 2000s the pumps would die and it was kind of a pain you change them out but even now like you get in the late 2000s and like now and I know the fuel pumps still go out but the technology and the machinery and everything that puts them together is much better um, so I feel a lot better about having that in the back of my car and driving, honestly, than a 4303. Uh, not that Magnafuel is a bad pump, it's just really old technology and it's super loud and it's heavy and it's just bulky and it's... And uh, the other thing with the in-tank pumps is you get the benefit of the fuel, so or the, the fuel sock, if you will. So that's the strainer that's on the pump itself before it gets out of the tank. And with the fuel cell living in the dirt, all that crap falls in the tank and then it would go straight into my filter. So I always had filter problems and everybody's like, why do you have so many fuel filter problems, Dane? I'm like, bro, I live in the dirt. People ride horses like in front of my house every day. Like they go up and down. Where do you think all that dust that those horses and stuff kick up? It all goes in Dane's fuel tank. Um, so now I'll have the sock in there. So when the dirt and all the crap goes in there, um, it hopefully won't get sucked into the deal and we can, you know, just service it, drain it as need be. Um, and you know kind of clean it up and deal with it that way so I can still have the external filter I should have to monitor that and change that out less which I will show you guys today and I get a gauge on that so that way I don't have to guess I'll just know if it's plugged or not by line of sight and I came up with that because I had so many freaking problems with fueling um, but let's get cracking we'll clean the trunk out we'll reinstall the fuel cell and we'll take a look at lines and get those plugged into existing and now uh, that is the goal for today on this episode. So stick with me. I'll quit rambling. Let's get working. All right, sorry for the annoying compressor. I don't know if I pointed this out, but we blacked that grill out. I think I showed you guys that. And then I actually brushed this trim because I was lazy and I didn't want to mask the car off. So up close, it looks terrible, but far away, it's blacked out. And I think that is it for the paint. I'm gonna leave this stuff silver. I'm not too worried about that. It doesn't bother me that much. And then I'm gonna get on my boy to see if he can come out and pinstripe this thing and then we'll make stickers, boom, from SoCal Sticker Kings and it'll say Malibu just like it did uh, previously. And I was gonna rinse this thing off because it's so dusty and dirty, but I didn't because otherwise I'd be laying in the water. Um, I learned that from doing it. Actually watering stuff down and then having to roll around in it and feeling like a jackass. So, oh, there's my tools. See what happens when you clean up? I wonder where this stuff went. Hit it from myself. Oh, I gotta order these two. Anyways, here's a look at the filthy trunk. So we'll clean this stuff out. I'm gonna wipe it down, kind of blow all this crud out of here. And then uh, we'll just mount this bad boy back to the crusty floor. 
Actually, what we'll do is we'll set it in here and see where the lines go uh, because I got to meet them up underneath over there. So let's get this all cleaned up, blow it out, and then we'll start fitting the tank in here and seeing where the lines are going to go. Glad I found my tools. All right, got the old cardboard creeper out, and we'll slide her on home. Here's my new office for the day. All right, so. Here is what we need to plug into. It already goes from A to Z. No reason to reinvent the wheel, right? At least not in my opinion. So this used to come up and around and my pump used to live here. And here's the wiring uh, that used to go to the pump. So we'll figure that out. Here's the ground, but um, yeah, we'll probably redo all that stuff. But today's adventure is to get the line from here uh, down here over to that. So it's almost a pretty well straight shot, really. You know, and just come out and give her a little kink here, cruise it over. I might even be able to bring it up. The, the, so here's the thing, is I'd like to keep it, because it's, it's vulnerable, I think, hanging out. I guess it's not bad, because the fuel tank used to live here, right? But if you're driving, it kicks something up. Um, that type of thing and usually like if you see something in the road you're like oh i'll just center it that way my wheels don't hit it and it goes under the car which is kind of funny because you got your transmission pan you got this guy you got your drive line so you should almost kind of like do it off to the side a little bit if there's something to dodge but you kicked it up and it smacked the freaking line so let me eyeball it for a minute we'll make a decision but obviously it's got to come through here and then go over there and i'll just figure out how to route it and i don't want to get too rowdy with the bends on it um, and then I have the Y block as well. So let me eyeball it. I'll bring you guys back with the plan of action. All right, we've sorted out all of the junk. So my buddy, Danny Cerny, big shout out to him and the Cerny family. Love those guys. His dad was the one that helped me lay the flames out. Anyways, he has a dragster and he got rid of some hard line. He was cleaning his garage out and he had some fittings and stuff. I said, give me all this stuff, man. I'll take it all. So I went through my pile. I didn't even remember that I had this because I didn't know. I just threw it all up there in my junk pile. Um, and this is a nice steel braided line and it saved me because I don't have enough. I don't think I have enough, I should say, to go from tank to the filter. So if that is the case, um, we are gonna run this guy. So what I'm gonna try to do is make the two lines because I have to make two. That's why I don't think I'll have enough. And then if I have enough to span it, I'd like to do it all in hard line. And if not, this dude will save us and we don't have to leave. I got the fittings, cut that little line up. I got the other fittings on the tank. So I'm going to make these ones first. So let me show you what we're trying to do. Then we'll bend it up. Maybe I'll give you a couple tips. But essentially, we need to just come out of here. And then I'm going to go, obviously, to the Y. And then something like so. Maybe like that. I don't know. Yeah something like that and it'll just come up go into these and then underneath the car will go actually i might i'll probably end up tilting it even though it looks goofy if i go straight down i don't want it to hang way down under the car so if i come at it come at it at an angle like this it's going to tuck tight to the body and then we'll attach the line or the hard line to the bottom of the car so that way it's nice and tucked up and uh, i want to come out here and then just go across and I want to leave room because I'd like to put my hitch here and I'll probably have to connect the frame. So I'm gonna keep the fuel line further up. I was gonna route it and tuck it in the frame and then go around because I thought that was a nice safe play. But I'm gonna end up screwing myself for uh, my tow hitch that I'd like to put in for the trailer for Rock Mount Race Week. And so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. So let me get on making lines and then Hopefully we have enough to hard line the whole thing. If not, like I said, we'll just go soft line. Then the soft line will poke up here. That's the other reason I have to basically kind of end it right here. So we'll go low enough that I can still get at the fitting to tighten it. Um, so maybe we can just like wrap the dude around here to hold it. I don't know. We'll get that far when we get that far. So let's make some hard line. All right, because I'm really short on material, I can't afford to screw up today. Usually I just buy more than enough, I leave things long, and then, you know, just make it simple that way. 
today I need to use every bit that I have and avoid going to the store and wasting my whole day once again. So I have baling wire because baling wire is cheap and plentiful. You could use welding wire, whatever you want. Um, this will get me in the ballpark and it's cheaper than welding wire. So I like to use baling wire. So let me cut piece off, couple foot. So I've got that. And I've got my fitting in place already. So what I'll do is we'll just kind of mimic you know the shape of what we're trying to do remember and it's a dash eight it's going to have a big radius bend it's not going to be like that you know so you got to just be generous with it and just eyeball it this is going to get you in the ballpark um it'll get us to the dance right so something like so the other thing too is you got to leave enough length on the down leg in order to fit the tool to make the flare. So you can't have a bend that stops right here. Um, I see a lot of people, you do that. That's why there's always a neck and then the bend. It's for the, the bending tool and then also the flare. So you can like on six or three, you can fudge it and just kind of hand work it and get it to kind of do its thing. On the bigger tubing, you gotta have that neck because it'll just smush when you try to do it. Eight's not terrible. Once you get 10 plus, if you can't do it with the tool, you're just gonna kink the crap out of it. Um, ask me how I know. So, I think I got really lucky with this because this basically does exactly what I would like it to do. So it's just a big J, this one's gonna go boom, boom, straight down. And then what I'll do, this since this is the easy bend, I'll show you guys. So this is like my little J, and literally it's just gonna go in there and then straight down to there, so like that. And then I think this fitting, like I said, I'm gonna cockeye the thing a little. So, see it if it'll come out. If I have it straight up and down at 45 is it. So maybe, I think we can just put it on there. Here's the other trick too, is once we kind of make this, I can use this as like kind of a handle and give it the old So maybe we'll just do that. And we'll see how she looks down here. See, that's not too bad. Um, so yeah, I think we'll just go with that. And if I got to do that, we'll just do that. So cool. So let me make a little J. I'll start with this side. I'll make it as tight as I can, make the J, drop it down, and we can mark it. And because that's a nice straight piece, it'll be easy to cut and flare and put it exactly where we want it. All right, get them on. All right, we got our first little J bend. Um, we got lucky because I just threw it the bender and bent it. And I should have checked the size of the radius and the offset. But we got lucky, so I'm just going to pretend like I know what I'm doing. Um, and what I mean by that is that it clears the tank. Look at that. <laughs> it barely does. But um, hey, you know, win's a win. So we'll screw that on. Then we just give it the little eh, eh, like I told you guys. Just little one of those dudes. Heck, really pretty dang good. Look at that. I'll just space it a little bit. I don't want that to rub because the thing's going to vibrate. But um, we're long enough. You know, we're trying to go again somewhere over here. So maybe we'll have to give it a little jog or whatever. But um, yeah, so I could have made it like the 90 and then spaced it a little bit and it came down. But hindsight is 2020. So that's how we're looking so far. We'll just give it a little tweak a roo and then figure it out from there so all right here's what this line tentatively looks like we just did a little jog off there uh, we got clearance here it's low enough that i'll be able to get to the nut uh, under here i believe yeah so i can get a wrench on that and these are all things when you build stuff long enough you realize i'm trying to make my life as easy as possible and not that difficult because it already is um, so now we have this and I want to make the easy one first now I just have to go from here to there so we'll take our wire we'll, we'll make a new little stencil and then again we leave it a little bit long so we can cut it to fit and we're gonna be golden all right ta-da there we are that's what we're gonna run um, Wying them inside would have been way cooler in my opinion because you would just have one and it would go down But it is what it is. This is my return. 
So my return just plugs right in. Bingo bongo, and then we got this guy, that's my vent. This is a rollover if you're wondering what that stack is. And then that vent's outside the car. Um, so it goes down, I'll show you underneath. And then what I ended up doing was I used this for a mock-up. And then I've got a little nut cert holding this guy. So it's not gonna go anywhere. Um, I'm gonna make a new hose. I use this for mock-up and I'll put a 45 on the end of it. So it'll go 45, so it'll keep it nice and tight and then cruise around. But I was fortunate to have this, so now I've got my measurement. And then that way we can negate this too. Like I don't want it banging or whatever when it's running. So if we 45 that, I may be able to stick like another one of these over here somewhere or like up here to control it a bit better. But we'll see, not too worried about it. So this plugs in, we'll clean this up, this hose up a little bit when we have the new one uh, made or I make it. I've got a buddy. I think he said he can make me a hose real quick. So I got fittings And that is it. So the next on the agenda will be We'll figure out what to do with these wire with the wires I'll probably tie it off maybe to one of these bolts because I don't feel good about tying uh, your hot leads to your fuel line So we either go there or we'll go you know, underneath over to there something like that and then my battery obviously is right here so we'll run the new relays here because I want to keep the relays by the fuel pump. We'll run the wires down real nice and tidy. I think we'll even run a ground for the pump. Everything for the pump is going to be by the pump. So that's kind of my theme for the car. So if I have an issue with a relay or ground with fueling, it's all in the same area. I'm not chasing some fuse block way up there and coming back to test wires. It's all in the same house. So that is that. Fine. Finally, 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 we made some progress. I feel good about uh, the day kind of got away a little bit. I had some running around and stuff to do as usual, but that is the weekend and other people have the weekend off. So they want to deal with you on the weekend. Uh, granted, I'm the same way, except I have 10 pounds of crap in a pound and a half bag, essentially. So that's going to wrap the video for this. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, maybe got some useful information on it. If you have any questions on bending hard lines and all that other stuff, I can give you tips. I know I have a video on here somewhere, so you can dig it up. But if you just got a question right away, leave it in the comments. I get back to you. I try to answer at least a couple times a week when I have time. So don't feel like I forgot about you if I don't answer right away. Because ain't nobody got time to be on YouTube every day, all day. Other than that, you guys know what to do. Like, subscribe, share. Until next time, I'm out.